everyone, how are you doing? I'm wearing a bit of a jumper dress. Let's see. Got this one at Zara the other week. I haven't been in front of the camera for quite a while, so do excuse. There is my lovely little plant in the background. She's been doing very well indeed. In fact, she has given me a few flowers. At the back, right there, she gives out flowers, which you can't really notice. Um, and the other day I did notice, so she's doing well here. Anyway, so I thought I'll pop in front of the camera and do a bit of a vlog. I love watching vlogs. My current favorite is Lee. I think it's Lee. I'll put it here somewhere. And um, oh gosh, even if I'm in my studio packing orders or doing something downstairs in the kitchen or my laundry, whatever I'm doing, I always love listening to her vlogs and watching them. So I have said about I think it was in February this year um, that I'm going to do a QA. and a I know it's taken me a very long time and I always had it in the back of my mind and I think I actually started filming it once and then I wasn't happy with the outcome so I just scrapped that video. Um, but today I thought I will just basically pop in front of the camera, just chat with you a little bit, a bit of a face-to-face -face, and... Uh, yeah, answer those questions. Believe me or not, it has taken me quite a while this afternoon to try and find which video it was that I actually suggested to do a Q&A so that you would send me questions. Now, I found uh, a video that had 113 comments on there and I think this is it. Is that it? I think so. So I've got my iPad here. I'll be reading it out of this video. So if there are any unanswered questions or you would like to add on a few questions, feel free to pop them down below and I'll do another Q&A and hopefully this time it will take less time for me to film it. Um, so yeah, let's start. Okay, so the first question is, what is your favorite media to use with watercolor? Right now it's definitely pencils, colored pencils. Um, if I just had to use or pick one medium to go with watercolor, that would be colored pencils. I have absolutely discovered the joy that is inexplicable. The fact that you can just create something with watercolor, go into that and add to it. When I used to think that there is nothing more beautiful than just watercolor on its own, ends up it's a revelation. <laughs> Pencils on top of watercolor make the watercolor even more. Who thought it'd be a possible thing to do? But yeah, definitely, I absolutely love, love that combination. Um, then we have another question. What are your favorite artists and paintings? So my favorite artist would have to be George O'Keefe. Just, you know, this, I was just, absolutely mesmerized at the scale and the lines and the exotic touch of such a brave artist and how the energy was so strong in those amazing beautiful big flowers. Um, so yeah, George O'Keefe was actually the first artist that got me absolutely in love with everything floral art, botanical art, but in a different way, not the traditional botanical art, but just paintings of flowers. I thought they were just on another level. They were just mesmerizing. Um, funny enough, Piet Mondrian also was an artist that I felt quite inspired by. And what I felt inspired by was actually does it look a bit dark here? I hope that's better. I fixed the um, exposure a little bit and I kicked the camera. So, uh, Piet Mondrian, yes. So, Piet Mondrian was the second artist that I was really, really inspired by. So, he would be the, the, the contrasting um, kind of element of, of the art. 
uh, to Georgia O'Keeffe, where Georgia O'Keeffe had very flowy lines and, you know, very um, powerful and feminine and, you know, all of that. Uh, whereas Piet Mondrian was, you know, <laughs> lines, squares, squares, lines, and it was the primary color palettes, so yellow, red, and blue. And there was something about it, just that organized way of looking at colors um, and shapes and things like that. But what was interesting, actually, very few people know that Piet Mondrian was painting dainty little fragile flowers. So the modern art was something that lingered straight away um, and I love that connection. Andy Goldsworthy, I believe, was the third artist that was, actually it was the trio. I had to pick three artists when I started doing art A-levels. So here in UK, um, when you sort of finish school and you go to college, which is before university, uh, you do a couple of years of your A-levels. And for my A-levels, I picked art. And this was the first time I actually... This is I, I mentioned this before. If you have been following my channel for a little bit, you would have heard me say this. But um, this is when I first got introduced to art. And basically, uh, I did my art A-levels and I absolutely loved. I got introduced to all the lovely art supplies I had no idea existed. And uh, yeah, so this was a very sweet time of my life. I absolutely, this, never mind all the other subject I was doing, art was the ones that I was just loving and absolutely adoring. Um, so yeah, Andy Goldsworthy, he was a really interesting sculpture and he would create these sculptures that actually degrade with time. So for instance, it would be all organic. It could be sand, it could be twigs, it could be rocks, it could be leaves. He would create um, a structure out of it and then take photographs as things would change. So as it would fall apart, as the, you know, if it was near water, how the water would kind of make the sculpture change. And it was just so beautiful to see that organic flow, uh, a sculpture that has life to it like the beginning of the life and then the end as it deteriorates um, so that was something very fascinating I have never come across anything like that before and those three artists have been the building bricks of my entire art fascination um, in terms of favorite paintings I mean, the obvious would be um, the the huge lily. I don't remember the name of the painting, but the white lily. I think it was on a pinky background, um, and it's by obviously Georgia O'Keeffe, and it just was powerful. the The lines, it was subtle. But there's just something about it, um, the fluency, and the power. Like that, it sort of fragile yet powerful at the same time that weird combination in her art I just find fascinating how did you find your art style Ooh, um, so practice practice and practice I'd say just pain 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 even if you're hating what you're painting keep on going keep on going buy cheaper um, sketchbooks and basically sit down Give yourself a couple of hours, whatever you have, and just keep on going and going and just get the ugly art out of your system. The more you go with it and break through, the closer uh, you will get to something that you will start actually noticing that you like. Because what I did actually with my girls, um, I started about 10 years ago, maybe. Around 10 years ago, I would start painting these faces and I would go through one sketchbook after another, just go to Cassard. I used to live in Hampstead in London and they had the Cassard um, shop on the corner. And I would pop in there quite regularly and get a, um, I think it was Winsor & Newton watercolour paper um, notebook. 
they have discontinued them since but I used to buy them and just go through them and at that time I used like fine liner the Pilot G Tech I think it was um, was it Pilot G Tech? I've got it here this was like my first fine liner which I used to do everything with so this is the Pilot where is it? 0 0.4 yeah G Tech C4 and a nice tin of 72 pencils I treated myself with the Derwent ink ink tens that's it I didn't need any more and also used a little um, bit of an of an old yes it was an old watercolor set back from the A levels and then the first watercolor set that I treated myself to was the White Knights uh, Nevska Palitra um, watercolor set and that was all I needed I didn't need anything else and just kept on going drawing these faces drawing these faces I tried different characters and then it just starts guiding you you start to change things around a little bit and you start um, well I was kind of experimenting with the lip shapes um, and, and just repeat repeat what you're doing repeat 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 and eventually you will have a breakthrough and then for many years I actually stopped and then I started again with a slightly more fresher perspective I was looking at a lot of fashion magazines I have a whole Vogue um, collection here um, a Vogue backdrop uh, of the what I consider the most inspiring beautiful magazines um, I don't think they're the same anymore but anyway and then I had a subscription later on so I have a few over there as well so just flipping through things that you find inspiring within the field so if it's flowers then look at different botanical artists go to galleries go to oh my gosh I went to so many art galleries whatever was up in London I would be there um, so that is very important to learn from the artists to just like a sponge be a little sponge and just absorb that energy the energy of art is just un unexplainable um, you know looking at the paintings of artists that have been long long pa passed away a long time ago the energy is still there in the color, in the brush strokes, in the canvas. But also things like um, Amy Travis, Travis, Amy Tracy, Tracy, I'm Amy Tracy. Hold on, hold on. Yes, Tracy Ammon. I went to her exhibition as well at the, I think, was it Tate Modern? God knows where, it was somewhere in London. And I remember it to be one of the most touching exhibitions ever because the energy of that artist of the woman is just amazing and she would also write little notes um, under her art and it was pretty pretty strong so yeah um, definitely would recommend to visit uh, a lot of art galleries if you can um, and books read read and read again it's just it helps a lot um, art books on the subject matter that you are interested in and yeah and practice I mean that's like how I get there <laughs> how, how I got there I I think this is just the, the way to do it the other thing of course is if you are into flowers for example then be one with the nature you know go into botanical gardens and observe take time to look at things to look at different flowers to look at different textures colors maybe have a little on the go palette and just mix up a few colors and just look at the leaf and do a few brush strokes there I find that that also gets you inspired by the time you get home you might be fired up and wanting to you know get all your art supplies or not all of your art supplies maybe just one or two and just start sketching and creating so that would be a good thing to do but yeah many years it took me <laughs> someone wished me here um to hit 
30k next year. I don't know if that's going to happen, to be honest with you. It has gone so slowly. The, like, so the year before that, it doubled. It was 10k the year before. And then this year, uh, early year, around January, February, it hit 20k. And then it just slowed down. I don't know, <laughs> has my content changed or is it just people found something else to do? But I can see also with other um, fellow YouTubers that they had quite a growth and then it just sort of kind of gone really, really slow now. I don't know what it is, but yeah. So another question here is, what is your inspiration for FOTD? So FOTD was my, one of the first, let's see if I can grab it here. It was this um, stamp set, which I still have. I actually done a restock now on Etsy and you can find it on there. So it's a build your own face um, illustration. And the inspiration behind it was all those 10 years ago when I was drawing those ugly, scary faces. <laughs> um, I might do a little flip through for you from my like old old sketchbooks one day let me know if you want to know uh, but I have specifically dedicated sketchbooks to just that well and the other thing the major part of it is of course um, when I was um, living in London I was working in um, large <laughs> fashion magazines and I at some point was um, writing a little column for their beauty department and so after that, I started my own beauty blog and creating all different face looks. So this is just like, you know, homage to that sweet London time when I had all of my PR events with the beauty brands, all the new products, releases and things like that. So it's sort of all connected, really. So here is another question. Did you study art professionally or are you self-taught? Definitely self-taught. I, um, the only time I studied art, and I can't really say study, to me studying art is like going and doing a art degree at a university, but I had art A-levels, which is just, you know, very basic um, at the end of the day, but you are introduced to a lot of um, artists and to a lot of uh, mixed media and different art supplies and all of that, so that helped me, that's all I had basically in terms of um, education in art. How many art books do you have in your library? Oh dear. Um, so uh, like reading books, there's a whole cabinet here and there I just have art books down below, up above and then down to the side there, the bigger ones that don't fit into here. Um, so yeah, there's there is a lot. I, I, I never counted. <laughs> so, but yeah. What are your goals slash dreams for your artistic future? Hmm. Um, I mean, I would love to sell my painted art. And so I feel like I need to develop more of a consistent style. I don't think I could just paint like a face of a doll and, and that could be considered art. It would have to tie into something. So I have been thinking a lot about it, how to make that finished artwork potentially or whether I should develop something else. I mean, I always, always felt fascinated, even before we moved to the countryside, I was fascinated by the English countryside and loved the fields and the Oh my gosh, I it was my dream to live somewhere where you can drive through fields and the fields change as the seasons come and you get these beautiful little cottages and whatnot. And it used to be like a fun weekend getaway. Never did I think that I would actually move to the countryside and enjoy this on a daily basis where I can just step out and go walk in a field. That is to me... Every single time I do that, I am fascinated by the beauty of the different crops and how the field changes as the, the crops are being cut and then 
you know the, the patterns of the shavings like the how how the tractors or whatever machinery cuts the um crops and and harvesting and everything and and how that creates beautiful lines and it's all into straight i mean natasha newton's art is so inspiring to me i would love to uh, develop my own style because i always enjoyed it i always drove through those fields and think you know i'd love to just take a picture get home and try to draw it but then i want to develop my own style and how i see and how i see and um, how i feel about those you know beautiful english countryside so um, I hope that one day I could maybe sell my own art. I think I would feel quite happy about that if people were willing to buy it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd be proud for someone to hang my, you know, art in their living space. What are the biggest challenges you face when creating and how do you overcome them? Well, a, a burnout, I guess that's something that possibly every YouTube creator experiences at some point and sometimes you just have that artist block where nothing seems to excite you and I hate absolutely hate those times where I come to my studio and all these beautiful colors that are on my desk and surrounding me they don't inspire me. It does happen, not very often, but it does happen. And so usually what helps is a good swatch fest. So I take a nice sized um, sketchbook, so not a small one, but like a good sized one, and then just start um, playing with art supplies that would excite me like before, like I, I know for sure I would enjoy those. And then just start sort of mixing them, maybe use different brushes for different textures or different tools, all that sort of stuff. And then at the end, most likely I will start to feel some sort of, um, yeah, some sort of inspiration. I'll show you actually a page um, of that in a second. So that's my Strathmore mixed media sketchbook and I actually bought a new one on um, Amazon so it's ready for me but I'll show you the picture or the page rather where I was feeling exactly that. I didn't date it so I can't tell you time reference but here is what I did. I think I might have actually filmed it um, and so just playing around I found a few areas which I really liked and then I have taken it to this and that kind of took me to that so yeah and after that I felt like I was out of it so definitely something like that just a nice you know swatch first what keeps you inspired to paint and create so generally um it could be what I like actually doing is this I always have sketchbooks laying open um everywhere they're on my desk so I don't know if you can see here there is one open with a color palette there um, there's one open like this but actually I'll show you what I like it to be open on this page so things that I have created in sketchbooks uh, I like to have them open also have a bit of a mood board which needs to be updated and I want to just like create color palettes and put it on there maybe I'll film it Think you can see a little bit of it there um so yeah so that and also certain art supplies that i like using i like them to be in a hands reach like you know i can just reach and look at them and looking at the colors inspires me sometimes i group them in a color palette and that also inspires me 
Um, so sometimes I pick different mediums in a certain color and I put them together in a group. That inspires me. So I make sure that my environment, although it's very messy, <laughs> there's just like, you know, you tidy it all up, looks pristine, but not for too long. And that's the case again. So I know I need to do a full studio tour, uh, but it's still, um, it's not ready. So that, and then a little stack of books. I always like to have stack of books that I would sort of grab, flick through. It could be anything. It could be on photography. It could be on botanical art. It could be on like fashion illustration. It could be uh, bouquet making. It could be even crochet. Why not? So the textures and the colors and weaving, um, all of that inspires me one way or another. And so that's like the immediate inspiration, but of course, like going to galleries, if you can, given the situation we have been in, um, that is a good inspiration and just YouTube as well. Just looking at other artists work. Sometimes I would find a beautiful texture or a nice color palette and maybe, um, a certain, I don't know, idea. Or, you know, something like that. You just sort of pick out bits and pieces here and there that you like. And then sometimes it doesn't resonate. Like, I would enjoy watching it. But then if I try to recreate it in my own way, it just doesn't feel right. Or doesn't feel, doesn't make me kind of feel excited about it. Then I just let it go. Um, it's all about trial and error and and yeah that so that's how I seek my inspiration so I think I've gone through all the questions if you have ever asked me a question for that Q&A and I for some reason didn't get to it although I'm, I made sure to answer all of them maybe if you ask me like somewhere else on another social media platform um or, like I said, you want to still ask something else on top of that, please feel free, leave it down below so next time I know exactly where to find it. And I hope you're well. It's a funny weather here. It's actually 20 degrees outside, so I'm feeling a little bit warm in this um, wintry fireplace type of a jumper. Um, but you never know. You never know with UK. It could be just starting pouring down with rain again and the temperature could drop. So... I hope you're all well and yeah just you know just chat to me just leave any comments you want down below well they have to be nice <laughs> that's the only request I have um, but yeah just uh, if you just feel like chatting about anything art related let me know and I'll get back to you when I can so what's coming there's a flip through coming i'm just finishing up my um caddy papers uh sketchbook which is the swatches sketchbook and i have three pages left yeah three pages left which are basically going to be occupied well one of the pages for sure is going to be occupied by the sennelier oil sticks and they take like day to, to two days to fully dry and then I will think of one more supply if I can find it but literally I have gone through all of my art supplies and swatched everything in there so it's really convenient now to find everything in one place uh, but that's one of the flip throughs that's coming soon so I think that is it for now if I ever promised a video that I haven't done also let me know in the comments because I try to keep a list, but I sometimes just, you know, it just gets a bit too much, all of it. I know that I'm still um, doing the watercolor pencil comparison. Um, anything else, if I have promised and haven't done yet, do remind me and always feel free to remind me. And that is it for today. I hope you're well. Look after yourself. Be creative. Um, find inspiration in anything and everything and you know power through so thank you for watching and I will see you very soon <laughs>